Pod People. On today's episode of What Fresh Hell Is This, my very good friend Roger is coming on to the podcast. We, we've talked about him since the beginning of this podcast, and now he is finally here. We are going to be talking about drugs, Paw Patrol, getting fucked up at Harry Styles, getting fucked up at the New York Philharmonics, getting fucked up at synagogues. A common theme here, we're going to get fucked up. All right, let's hop into it, Worsties. Ugh, Christ. What fresh hell is this? Hello and welcome to What Fresh Hell Is This with me, Stanzi Potenza. Whoo! I got a little emotional uh, earlier. Pff, gay. Pff. <laughs> uh, I got uh, pretty emotional. We're actually uh, uh, recording the uh, intro and monologue after we've already had uh, today's guest on, uh, Roger. My, my very good friend, Roger, who I allude to in, like, episodes all the time because he is my like closest friend in New York. I drag him to all of the the shit that I do. You know, I drag him to all of the the events that I get invited to. Um, some terrible, uh, some amazing uh, like Harry Styles. I think I've talked about that on the podcast before. But oh God, the thing about me is that uh, despite uh, being kind of a dickhead online and you know, acting kind of like a terrible person and really putting that foot forward, the real, the, you know, fucked up foot and being like, how can I joke about this terrible thing in a borderline, not tasteless way, you know, like, you know, like not tasteful way. I'm like, how can I kind of be a little fucked up today? What's, what's the new fucked up thing I can joke about and get away with it? You know, despite being a dick, I'm also a huge fucking pussy. <laughs> So, uh, Roger kind of talks about how he'll miss me when I, when I move. And that just made me, I'm like, oh God, now I'm trying so hard not to like cry right now on the podcast. I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Don't, don't fucking cry on the podcast. That's so, it's so stupid. You fucking loser. Don't show emotion. Don't let them know your weakness. <laughs> your weakness being gay best friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what kind of, uh, why. I love an Irish goodbye uh, because you just leave. You know, you don't have to deal with goodbyes. I'm sort of Irish goodbye in New York. I try to Irish goodbye as much as possible. It's just very efficient. It leaves other people wondering where the fuck you went. But I would Irish goodbye at my own parties. Like people would stay awake, you know, they would sleep over the house. You know, like like cast parties or like birthdays and they're like, where did, where did Stanzi go? It's like, oh yeah, she changed into her pajamas and she fucked off. She's asleep right now. And there were like, I had like friends in college being like, we were all, uh, we're all waiting for you. And you never came back. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I went to bed. That was dumb of you to wait. But, uh, you know, doing it at like uh, different gatherings and stuff, because the thing is like when you have a big gathering, if you actively are trying to say goodbye to people, then like everyone is coming and saying goodbye and then they but before you leave they have a quick little fucking story to tell you and like everyone's got to get their last word in and it's like god it's like it, it's like the odyssey I'm like i'm just trying to go home i'm just trying to like i feel like fucking odysseus i'm like get me home i just want to go home and see my family again like i can't keep doing this i can't keep getting dragged around and pulled into new stories and shit i'm just trying to fucking leave so that's what i typically do they go hey where'd you go did you die i'm like no i got an uber and i left i love you but goodbye i am i was done with this interaction social battery ran out and i left but uh, I am Irish goodbye in New York uh, just because I don't think I can physically handle the uh, emotion, the emotion, the, the singular emotion, <laughs> the, the one emotion, the I can't handle the emotions that come with being like, goodbye, friends, I'm leaving and then having to do all that fucking bullshit. Um, so I've been trying really hard to be like, yeah, whatever. I'll be back. I'll be back to the East Coast, you guys. It's not a big deal. Um, but of course, Roger had to just be randomly like sentimental. Super off brand for him. Speaking of Roger, let's just like, let's not even waste any more time, okay? 
Roger, we're going to welcome to the show Roger Dolly. Roger is one of my oldest friends. We have done a lot of theater together. He was uh, the mark to my Maureen. We did Wedding Singer together where um, I was Cindy Lauper. He was Nancy Reagan. We love a good drag performance. We have had so many memories together over the years. And uh, New York this past year has been just amazing. So uh, let's dive into it. Uh, welcoming to the show, my dear, dear friend, Roger Dolly. Roger, <laughs> welcome <laughs> to the show. Thank you so much for having me. God, what a fucking pleasure. <laughs> Roger and I have <laughs> done this intro like four times because <laughs> three, <laughs> yeah, three times because the recording kept cutting out. So we had to keep we have to keep being like, oh my God. Hey. <laughs> so good to see you. This is the first time. Wow. wow. I mean, we're actors, right? So it's like, I'm just putting, I'm just in, in character right now. But I, as I said uh, three other times, um, <laughs> Roger has been a reoccurring character on What Fresh Hell Is This for like since it started. And it felt very appropriate to have him finally on the show uh, before I leave New York. Roger, I mean, we've just had so many adventures, so. We really have. We really have. It makes have. sense. I was so pumped yeah. when you moved here. And it has been a great year, I will say. It's been a great year. I mean, we we have had, like, so many crazy moments this past year. And it feels so crazy to be like, yeah, it's only been a year just because so much has happened. And all of those, like so many of the adventures that I've had the past year have had you in it. So just, and so people, you were just like a character in my life. And now we're, we're really putting a, a face to, to the name, right? The man behind the myth, you know, like the, the legend himself. But Roger and I have been friends for like, 13, almost 14 years. Which is because insane. we did community theater together. Oh, we, we started theater camp. at what, like 13 or 14, being like yeah. some of the most insufferable people in the room at a community theater on the South Shore of Massachusetts, which is truly just like the most insufferable environment. But we had fun. We had a blast back in the day. Oh, yeah. I mean, what a great experience that was. We, I mean, we met so many people. Like lifelong friends, you know, um, and I think for so many of us who were just mentally ill, <laughs> we needed some sort of outlet, right? I was going to say. We needed like a theater to be like, oh, turn that pain into art. Yeah. We were like, yeah. It was really the place to be like, if you've ever considered self-harm, like that was the number one spot to really truly be. Anyone mentally ill, it was really like <laughs> the watering hole for everyone unwell. I remember like uh we there was she has pa uh, since passed but one of the most like important uh I think figures in our childhood her name was Jordy Saucerman she was this like tiny southern lesbian <laughs> who like ran the theater and she would be like like baby doll like <laughs> like you would just be like come in and be like mentally ill and she she like <laughs> She, like, loved that. She's like, yeah, like, when they first came to the theater, they were a mess. And now, look at him. Gay. <laughs> Literally, like, for context, though, this woman's, like, catchphrase for anyone who, I mean, now can't have the great pleasure of knowing her. But her literal catchphrase was, baby, I'm a mentor, not a role model, was her whole thing. And that was how she justified just, like saying crazy things she used to give everybody popsicles and the whole joke they were rainbow popsicles so she'd be like you know you have one of those you're gonna turn gay those popsicles make you gay baby was like the, the whole freeze pops make thing. you gay <laughs> because they wrote an article about it like some there was some article about how like company theater was like turning kids gay and so then the ongoing joke was just like, yeah, the, f the freeze pops make you gay, baby doll. And like any of our like very obvious gay friends, like she, like that, like we're at the theater. She'd be like, it's the freeze pops. She also <laughs> got a lot of freeze pops. She's from the South. And one of my favorite like anecdotes for her for some reason was she would walk around and I'm like 13 years old. And she would just be like, did you know Abraham Lincoln? He was homosexual. He was gay. <laughs> like constantly that came up for some reason. And I was like. Like, were you there? Oh, the other thing was um, talking about Hiroshima. There was some show that had, like, war. Oh, yeah. In it. Hiroshima. She fully, literally would be like, Hiroshima, 
I was there, baby. I saw those fe- faces melting off. And we were like, you weren't, though. Like, timeline-wise, <laughs> you couldn't have been. <laughs> she was in both of the towers before they fell and the planes and the Pentagon. She was there for all of it. What yeah. a formative what, like, lesbian in our lives, though. Like, what a formative Very formative lesbian. In the best it way. It was a beautiful... So that was, you know, that's kind of like uh, the backstory with Roger and I. But, you know, we we grew up doing a bunch of theater together. And then we, you know, went to college and we kind of lost touch and then reconnected prior to uh, COVID. And then I moved to New York. And then... um I, uh, we have a mutual friend named Olivia and we sort of became this little threesome and I don't think any of us were expecting that to happen. Roger was just like, I want you to meet this uh, this girl. She's she's really amazing. I think that you'll have a lot in common. Um, and I met her and she was really wonderful. But then we became like all really good friends, which is so amazing. Um, but they met because Roger was on tour with her for Paw Patrol. <sighs> Tell us about that. What a time in my life. So I'm like, I moved here at 18, (laughs) which at this point was almost eight years ago, which is crazy. But um, moved here at like 18, was here for about a year and a half, two years. And during that time, I was like auditioning for random stuff and taking classes. And a casting director in one of the classes either kept my headshot or remembered me or something and was like, hey, will you come in for this thing? And I had never heard of it. Um, didn't want to go in for it, but I was like, you know what? I want to impress this man, so I'll go in. And then inevitably, they just were like, it's you. You're going to do this for a year. And so for a year of my sweet little life at like 20, I was basically like Steve in Blue's Clues or like Dora in Dora um, all across the sweet North America slash United States. Um, And Olivia was one of the other humans in that show. We were not the bitches. I want to clarify, I was no one's bitch in Paw Patrol. (laughs) But um, yeah, that was wild. And that was how I met Olivia. And then we stayed in touch. So pandemic hits. You go from working at a cupcake place to becoming Stancy Potenza. And then she goes from being just Olivia, who I had worked with, to all of a sudden in 2020, she became the voice of Dunkin' Donuts, Coles, Slack. Like all the time, if I had the TV on, it was Olivia's voice. So you guys had this weird thing of bizarre success during a time when no one was succeeding. And I was like, oh, you gotta meet, you gotta meet. And that kind of spawned that. And yeah, we've all hung out very consistently over the last year. It's been fun. It's been amazing. I do think it's really funny that uh, when Roger was in Paw Patrol, uh, The Onion did a little... Uh, article about him and that was me seeing Roger like during a time where we were kind of both doing our own thing and being like they just make fun of Roger on the onion for doing Paw Patrol literally one day (laughs) I woke up and it was um the headline was like either Jesus Christ or oh god I can't believe someone actually brought their kids to it (laughs) and it was my big old fat 20 year old face front and center and that was that was something um but people did come. People like big names. People came. So like a month into it, they were like, oh, some you're going to meet. There's going to be a meet and greet and it's going to be early morning, like 9 a.m. Um, security reasons. You cannot know who it is, but show up to work early, whatever. I get there and it's right before I'm walking in the room. They go, it's Kim. I said, Kim who? <laughs> Kim Cattrall. Like there's a lot of people named for Kim. <laughs> yeah. And they go, Kardashian. And this was like a month or two after the Paris robbery where she was like held at gunpoint. So it was like, no one could know she was there. And in strolls Kim Kardashian at like, you know, 9, 9.30 in the morning or something. And her child, I think it was, um, it wasn't North because I thought that was at least funny. I think it was Saint. Um, And so it was literally like me rolling around on the ground with her and her kid for like 45 minutes. It was just bizarre, but it was at the height of that franchise. So it was like Kim, Sierra, Fergie, Lin-Manuel and Jimmy Fallon, like all these people were bringing their children to that at that time. So it was like, it was a good time to do it. I will say. Wow, that is insane. I I could never do that again. I could never do that now. That's a huge commitment. That's a lot. Yeah. Even the idea of doing like a tour for myself, for my show, I'm just like, oh, man, like doing the trap. I mean, I'm going to do it, but I'm just like, whoo. Yeah. You you know. Mm. Oh, no. I'm forced to go on tour and be successful. (laughs) 
I'm just a little bad. Oh. Oh. That is one of <laughs> the funniest I think bits that you and I have where Roger and I, um, I don't know why this started. I don't, I don't know, know what, like when or how, like, it was just like we would be out in public and like, I remember being like, like just in like loud bars and just being like, <laughs> and then like people would walk, <laughs> people would like walk by. You know, and they'd kind of look around, and we would look around, being like, "What the who, fuck who was that? that? Who said that?" Like always. <laughs> and it's like, "What the fuck?" The key is to sound like some you're world in pain. we live in. Like the big key yeah. is to really sound like it hurts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like it's just fucking like a horse cock. Yeah, like you're just getting. Yeah, yeah. And I don't. So we were, but we were hanging out with our friend Olivia uh, like a couple of days ago. And of course, this happens right before I leave because I was like, oh, I'm going to do this to her every time. She said something. She like was drinking something or she was eating something. And then I think it went down the wrong. She goes, oh, she goes, ow, my hole. <laughs> and us being adults who are almost like 30, we're like, Haha, did you just say hole? <laughs> for hours. We're like, oh no, my hole. For hours. Oh. We wouldn't shut up. Literally being like, ah, and she, ah, like, for oh, so long. My hole. Oh. And she was just dying laughing. And I'm like, well, you're giving me a great reaction. I'm like, this is exactly what I want. If you keep doing that, I, I am not going to stop ever for the rest of my life. So we had to go to like a bodega because she wanted snacks. So we're just like walking down the street being like, yeah, anyway. So then I was like, oh. And she was like, no, stop, not not in the middle of the street. It's amazing. Like, I, so much fun. Um, but we, I mean, what a crazy year it has been. Like, think about all of the stuff we've done. I, I know that, uh, I know you are secretly doing a little countdown on your top moments. But, like, we have, we, like, we saw Harry Styles. Okay, stop right like, here. I'm going to hijack the crap out of this because I literally have a list okay. and that's one of the things on it. So I was giving a little homework. Um, I definitely will miss the crap out of you, I have to say. It's uh, it's very bittersweet because it's been a lovely year and it's been lovely to like geographically not be that far from each other again at this like stage of life. But then also like there are so many great things to come and like we all know this is just the beginning and LA is going to be wonderful for you. But... We do have to look over the last <laughs> year um, and appreciate some of these moments. I will say much of this has probably been covered on the pod, but we have to circle back oh, to yeah. some of these. I went oh, I know we do. through my camera roll specifically to figure out just like when you got here and on, what are the top events? And the first thing that I do want to start with was actually your first night here. Um, the first, <laughs> I, I have this written as, Baby's first time in New York City being recognized. If you recall, we are at, let me oh. set the stage, we're in the West Village at the Duplex, which is like a, a wonderfully shitty piano bar, highly recommend. Um, and I brought Stanzi, her mother Alice, and we went out and this man just approached you for the first time and you had the moment of like, oh God, someone just stopped, knows exactly who you are, and then was buying you drinks? I can't remember. Yeah, I think he bought me like two drinks, and then we stayed with him for the rest of the night. That was like what was yeah, funny we saw, about like that a drag show. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And my mom and and her boyfriend Todd like fucked off. They were like, "We're gonna go to karaoke," and I was like, "Okay, bye." bye. Yeah. And then that night ended with, I think you threw up in your purse, and I lit meatballs on fire at my apartment. So that was like a <laughs> yes, great way did. to start. I literally woke up to the you know. Not the ambulance, the freaking fire truck people fire being like, department. is there a yeah. fire? And it was just me being like, no, I left the meatballs on the oh, stove. I'm yeah. so sorry. You're like, oh, sorry, mister. <laughs> I uh, I threw up in my purse. Yes, I did. And the Uber driver's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good, man. And then uh, obviously I like threw my purse into the like washing machine and uh, somehow salvaged it. And then I... I just laid down naked in my shower and kind of passed out for like maybe 20 minutes and just let the water hit my face. That's one of the last times. I think it it's either the last time or the second to last time I've thrown up because of alcohol. Rock bottom. 
rock yeah, fucking bottom. Yeah. So that's that was our. I was like, first, welcome to New York. It's been waiting for who you. Um, yes. The second thing that came to mind was just the time the fucking Empire State Building casually just invited you to come <laughs> stroll along and visit. And we couldn't, that was maybe the beginning of the sex noises, was we couldn't stop. There's children, there's tourists around, and we're like, ah, at the top of the oh, Empire yeah. State Building. <gasps> that was, so there was that. I think that probably was the beginning of it, but it was also us just walking around the observation, like the outside of the observation, like deck being like, and me being like, you know, it could happen again. You know, pretty tall building. That was bad. It could happen again. You could- We couldn't stop being just like wildly inappropriate at the very top of the Empire State Building. Never forget. Never forget, yeah. Never. And, and it was you just being like, stop. And I'm like, well, I remember walking through that gift shop too, and there was a really terrible shirt that was like a hundred dollars. Almost bought it for the. I was like, as a joke, but I'm like, that's a very expensive joke to just have this terrible shirt. To remember that time we went to the Empire State Building, good memory. Never, that was very early on too. Never forget. Um, the next never thing forget. that comes to mind, another big like mentor in our lives, um, is this man named Michael Joseph. He now has like verged into the friend zone in the best way like it's strange to have someone who taught us so much in adolescence now be like a social fun like friend figure in our lives but at some point in the last year he um actually ended up getting super into judaism which is awesome kind of later in life he's got to be in his like mid 60s um but we he invited us to his b'nai mitzvah um his bar mitzvah and we decided to show up just crossfaded as hell at like maybe 9 a.m. or something. That was a pivotal, pivotal moment in the last year. Something shifted that day. That was very silly day. I was just talking about that uh, recently. I, I forget why I brought it up, but I was uh, I was like, yeah, I went to this like B'nai Mitzvah. Not only was it like J- Roger and I get it like going, my mom came out of town with her boyfriend to like go to this thing. Because we were randomly, we were at this uh, gay bar called Flaming Saddles when he like invited us, like dancing cowboys on the table. And my, and he's like, you want to come to my B'nai Mitzvah? And we're like, yep. Honor of and my then life. he invited like my mom. Honor of my and life. And I like mom. told her, I was like, if you, if you want to come. And she like came from out of state. And then okay. it's also worth mentioning, it was like the week that her cat had died. So she came her in like- cat Harry Potter died. Very emotional. Like very, during the service also, they're like- you know, say a prayer for those who passed on. And my like drunk ass turns to them at like 930 in the morning. And I go, RIP Harry Potter, the name of their death <laughs> Um, So that was fun. But she also like, because she was so emotional, she was like having a day. We're all having drinks, whatever. She gets a little rough and emotional. And another woman we know turns to Stanzi and goes, yeah, my mom has a drinking problem too. <laughs> What? Like, Alice doesn't have a drinking problem, but it was the most bizarre. It was just too good. It was such a, it was such a day. And the, the edibles that, um, that we took because, yeah, because Roger and I were like, my mom, I haven't been to like any really religious events because I, you know, wasn't raised with religion. So I don't really know what I'm walking into when I go to these things. Like anytime I've gone to a church, it's because someone has died. Or traveling in Europe and going to see the architecture. Uh, Like, those are my, like, experiences. So my mom goes, oh, yeah, by the way, this, like, thing, it's probably going to be, like, six hours. And I was like, holy fuck. It wasn't. It was, like, three. But I was like, Jesus Christ. And so I was like, I cannot be sober for this. Like, there's just, there's no way. No. Can't do it. So I, like, you texting me and you're like i have a a a margarita in a to-go cup and i'm heading to the synagogue and i was like all right i just i just had a vodka red bull at 9 a.m and uh and i brought this edible which is like this little taffy it's like a it's like a weed edible however it's i've never had a worse experience on drug and i've done a lot of drugs we all know this i've never had a worse experience on drugs than taking one of those but like a whole taffy and it's like this big the size of like a fucking nickel or like a quarter maybe but you know we're, we're just f- fucked up and high in this synagogue watching this man we really respect convert to judaism my mom's sitting next to us you know 
devastated over the dead cat. And I kept walking by her throughout like the rest of the day, you know, like we went to a bar later that night. I'm walking by her and she's just like, yeah, I just have a lot of like, you know, I, I just feel like um, maybe I'm not a super good person. I'm like, Jesus Christ, what is going on here? I was like, go to bed. She did. She, and did. she disappeared at one she point. She did. I was going to say that from then on, she literally just disappeared. The five, ten minutes go by and we're like, where is Alice? You were like, she died. Literally in bed. Yeah, yeah I know. You're, you were like, your mom is dead. Yeah, I was literally like, dead. Nice. I bet the world's not fucking turning like a mile a minute right now. God. You know, I bet she's not. I bet she doesn't have double vision or anything. Just admit that you're drunk. <laughs> it's OK. You had a rough week. But that was a great memory. That was, that's one. Of, that's a core memory for that us. That was a quintessential New York event. And I just have to say, Lahayam. All right. We will be right back. Welcome back. Moving on to the next piece. Um, baby's first live shows. We have to, like, we have to touch on that. So I got to see, you had four sold out stand-up shows. I got to see three of them. I, my old ass could not make it to the 10, 10 30 PM weekday show, but that first one, come on, like what? 300 people sold out. Somebody drove on a motorcycle from like Indiana just to see you yeah. do your first thing. Come on. Like that was a huge deal. That was that was really amazing. That that I mean that first show for obviously for the the podcast or like our podcast live show. Um sold out and that was really crazy. And yeah, it was a bigger venue than the other shows that I did uh, since uh cuz my touring agent was like, "Let's start off let's do, like do it like have like a little more casual sort of shows before we kind of expand." Now now that we I've done it, they're like, "All right, are you comfortable moving into like bigger venues now? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's great. I've already done bigger venues. You know, I did the the live show. But that was a really great thing to have friends there for, you know? And and you're sort of like, I feel like you fill in for my mom because my mom is the one that's always like, I have to go to every single show ever. And I'm like, no, you can't. I was like, you have COVID? And like, she's just been consistently sick for like the entire like winter. She's like, eh, eh, I'm on my way. And I'm like, no, stay the fuck home. Stay away from me. Don't get me sick. Right. And uh, I was like, it's fine. You don't need to be there for this. I'm going to Boston at some point. Like, I'll be there. And Roger is there. Roger's going to be there. Like, and and he's going to ha- carry your spirit with him. So don't worry. I'm your mommy but- now. Yeah, you're my you're my real mommy. Um, oh, mommy Roger. Oh my god. When you so that was the big <laughs> joke when you moved here was that I'm the momager. I am the Chris Jenner of the operation. Let's be real. This is why my mom is just fucking obsessed with you, you know? I love Alice Potenza. I deeply and genuinely have a connection with any woman over the age of 45. Like for whatever reason, I just relate to them far more. But I would like a little drum roll. We have two two more quick ones, but um, the time oh. we got box seats to Harry Styles. Shout out to Grande Cosmetics. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Dab, dab. Grande Cosmetics, um, thank that you. That was unreal. That was... Uh, Roger, the, I think part of the reason why Roger is so... Aside from us just being friends and hanging out, like, you know, I would, I would get invited to different events and I would be like, oh, God, like... I'm going to an influencer event like like I don't I don't want to do that shit alone um so I would be like Roger you want to come to this fucking thing and you would just be like yeah sure um so I'm like dragging Roger to like influencer events and stuff and like some of them are fun and some of them are like dumb dumb but it's just a thing to do and usually they're like oh it's a free thing but Harry Styles was one of those things that like I don't feel bad dragging Roger to this, right? I'm like, the other ones, I'm like, a little silly. But that was, I get chills. I was on drugs. I was was on shrooms. But we, like, we just, we we did the little influencer thing where they're like, here's your goodie bag and here's, do a little post. Do you want to take a, yeah, the boa. They gave us the free boas. Oh. And and then we we got our little goodie bag. We did the little like, yep, here's the photo. And then we just sat down. We were like, and and it's happening. I cried as soon as he got on stage. Did his little gay little prance around. I was like, there he is. 
There he is. It's Harry. It's Harry. That little twang. Harry. That little twang killed Harry. It. I will give it to him. He killed it. That was an experience. If you've seen Harry Styles, you know, he puts on a great show. But that what that made me realize how much I missed like concerts and stuff and not having to deal with like standing and getting pushed around, just being able to sit and like just enjoy it. And and that was amazing. Yeah. We had a great that time. Was 12 out of 10. But I will say yeah. uh, a sweet little drum roll, please, for the last and I will say most recent thing that in uh, so again i've lived here almost eight years in the like nearly eight years this to me felt like a quintessential new york evening we got together before i had a little quesadilla and like some sangria or margarita <laughs> took some shroom chocolates and then went to the new york philharmonic and yes, it was did wild we get there we're just the messiest people at the event always Stancy <laughs> has a drink in her hand is talking about how much it means to be a woman in comedy and crushes the drink with the strength of her fist while she's talking about how passionate she feels about that we then proceed to go to the bathroom prior to the performance beginning and as i'm at the urinal alone because everybody's already seated over the speakers, you know when an orchestra warms up and it's like one, the first chair will play the note and then they're all doing the doo -doo 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 -doo. Mm, like bizarre, like <laughs> bizarre sound. As I'm peeing, that starts happening and the shrooms hit. So it literally was oh, like yeah. all simultaneously, we meet outside the bathroom and immediately cannot stop cackling laughing. <laughs> that is definitely... One of my favorite things that I've I've done. Oh, same. First of all, shout out to the New York Philharmonics. That was an amazing experience. Thank you so much for inviting us to a very nice like a event thing. But the shrooms are like starting to hit, and we sit down and we're like watching the the thing. And they do a beautiful first thing. We're trying not to like laugh. We're trying not to be too silly. And then the rest of the show happened. It was great. It was Beethoven. So I don't know what the it was number fucking seven. I don't know. Uh, but then we like meet the they gave us like a tour of the place after we're meeting like the musicians and stuff. And we are just tweaking out. We met like the main person that was like featured. Yes. And we were just like, hey, man. What? How are you doing? One of the greatest, great. That was fucking one of the awesome. Greatest, like clarinetists in the world. And we're like, <laughs> So like, what brings I'm like, you how here? <laughs> great job. Yeah, we're like, great job, man. That was fucking awesome. That was incredibly silly. That and and these this is just like this is just like part of the, you know, the experience. These these were just some events, but like we had a crazy pride together. Like we had like just anytime my mom was randomly in town, you know, like just crazy stuff. And we're we're gonna do a last hurrah. Um, before we go, and uh, we're going to sleep no more on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, oh, yeah, literally or, tomorrow. Yeah, it? yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, we're going to sleep no more. Um, because Roger and Olivia have never been, and they've been in New York longer than I have, but I've already been twice. Um, and it's one of those things that I always tell people: I'm like, you have to do this if you're in New York. You ha it's one of those things that you just have to do. So I'm super excited that we get to like go and have that kind of like last hurrah, but. With Roger, you know, with like some of the other like New York people, I'm like, yeah, maybe like this is not something, you know, maybe this will fizzle out and stuff. But I'm like, Roger, you know, you're my like pretty much my oldest friend at this point. And this is super gay. I'm going to I feel emotional. Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> uh, ooh, gay, <laughs> stupid, dumb, idiot, whatever. But I'm like, you know. Uh, I, I, t I said this to you the other day when uh, we were going to the second show when I met you at your at your workplace and I was like yeah I mean you're basically family like you know my mom fucking loves you I'm like even if you and I had a falling out my <laughs> I'm like you would still just be there to hang out with my mom and my younger sister Nella you know I'm like you're you're just part of the family so we'll never you know not be in touch and we're gonna i think be in each other's lives for until the rest of our lives you know that's just oh yeah that's just, we're just stuck with each other 
So uh, for better or for worse, two fucking graduation friends forever. As we go on, like Jesus fucking Christ. I'm like, no. we, we were no. in the trenches together in theater camp, you know. We didn't mention, we should contextually, for any like true nerds out there, we, I feel like we christened our friendship with, we were Mark and Maureen in a high school production of Rent. Yes, That we were. kind of solidified the glue that was already there. Yes, that was, that was the bond. That's how I describe you to a lot of people. I'm like, yeah, he was the Mark to my Maureen. It explains the whole thing. I it explains say. the whole thing. But we will we will have those moments again, right? Olivia's trying to force Roger to move to L.A. right now. <laughs> like, gun to my head. I can't. I can't. I'm like, <laughs> you say that now, <laughs> but in a year from now, you're going to be another little gay boy in uh, West Hollywood. So. Jesus Christ. Tw- that's twink <laughs> death. That's twink death. That's twink death. <laughs> Well, baby, this is just the beginning for you. You this are is, flying this on is the beginning for pastures. And when I always say that when I have enough money, uh, I will hire Roger as my official momager. And that, when that day comes, that will be the day that our friendship dies. <laughs> I was going to say, that'll be the end of a good working relationship. <laughs> Oh, God, this is amazing. I mean, Roger, thank you so much for coming on the show today. This has been amazing. Oh, please. No, thanks for having me. Love to the worsties. Love to the worsties. And just the last final message is just like, Oh, what a beautiful trip down uh, memory lane. That was, um, that sort of reminded me of just how, um, oh, fuck. Oh, God, I can feel it. I can feel the emotions. Oh, that just sort of reminded me of how, um, like, amazing my, oh, God, I'm getting so emotional right now. Um, this is super gay. <laughs> Oh, God, this is going to be so annoying when people when this episode comes out and then people are like, oh, my God, you cried. <laughs> um, New York has been like an amazing experience the past year. Roger, huge part of that. Um, and I know I talked uh, in the intro about like uh, how I love I want an Irish goodbye because uh, I don't want to deal with emotions. Um but going to New York from Boston was kind of like an easier um, hike because it's still pretty close. Um, thank God I'm not like a super ugly crier right now because, whoo, fuck. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'll be in L.A. And uh, this was something I always knew was probably going to happen eventually because I've known since I was a kid that I would have a very successful career uh, in the in the entertainment industry. And uh, I am, you know, this especially this past year, and it's been probably since the beginning of COVID, but I've I've known that especially this past year, it's been so um, validated, you know, uh, the, the fact that like I I'm going to have a very successful career and my dreams are coming true, which is an amazing thing. But uh, when you are doing stuff like this, you also have to, you know, kind of sacrifice being uh, close to like your uh, friends and family. And I have amazing friends in L.A., so I'm super excited about that. Um, But yeah, it's going to be a little (laughs) bit of an adjustment. (laughs) Also, my producers are just like watching me cry on this fucking like was recording right now and just like giggling at the fact that I'm like anyway so this is super fun and <laughs> like a comedy podcast um it's all all good things are happening it's amazing but uh yeah you know it's I'm going to miss the east coast so much no one gets it no no one outside of like the east coast understands but it's just like I don't know it's just we're so like attached to it. And so the idea of living across the country is like, oh, fuck. Oh, God. But I, it's going to be it's going to be great. It's 
going to be an amazing uh, experience. And yeah. Um, whew, yeah, this is like uh, one of the last uh, recordings that I'm going to have in, in New York. So I, uh, I, I really uh, loved kind of just reliving all of the crazy stuff that we've gone through this past year. Um, Roger and I and, and Olivia and I and just like all of uh, the things that have happened this past year. So many crazy things. And sometimes when I'm, uh, I I spend too much time at home and uh, I'm not doing anything, you know, I'm just kind of working. I'm kind of like, God, I'm so fucking bored. Like, I just waste so much time just like, you know, thinking of new ideas and like not doing things. And then, you know, and then we do a recap of all of the crazy stuff just in New York, too. Th those were just the things that happened in New York, you know, um, not even like Vegas or L.A. Like those were the New York specific things like it's just been a fucking awesome year. And uh, so now I'm going to stop being a pussy loser um, and uh, just, you know, fucking stop being a nerd. This is super dumb. Whatever. No, I didn't even, I didn't cry. That was my acting. Ugh, okay. Well, uh, thank you so much for being uh, a part of this experience because you guys have actively been a part of this journey for me. Um, I, I get messages all the time from the worsties being like, it's been really fun watching your career take off since I started following you. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. That's puts things into perspective. Um, and I, I I get told all the time by my other creator friends um, how amazing my my fan base is because you guys are super supportive um, and I really appreciate that. So I, I feel like I'm giving a like I have fucking terminal cancer and I'm saying my good my final goodbyes before I kick the bucket. Jesus Christ. All right. Well, anyway, thank you. I will be alive and on the other side of the country. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, and I will, I will see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>